the mother of James and Salome bought spices that they might come and anoint him very early in the morning on the first day of the week they came to the tomb when the sun had risen and they said amongst themselves who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us but when they looked up they saw that the stone had been rolled away for it was very large and entering the tomb they saw a, 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 a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed but he said to them do not be alarmed you seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified he is risen he is not here see the place where they laid him but go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee and there you will see him as he has said to you so they went out quickly we are still reading verse 8 I can't hear our voices again so they went out quickly and fled from the tomb for the tremble that we are made okay. verse 9 now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week he appeared first to Mary Magdalene all of whom he had cast out devils and she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept and they when they heard that he was alive and had been seen of her believed not Amen please go to John chapter 20 Verse 11. Let's read together verse 11. But Mary stood outside by the tomb, weeping, and as she wept, she stood down and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and and they said unto her, Woman, why we pass down? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they are living. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why we pass down? Who seeketh thou? She supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Verse 16, Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Verse 17, Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I say to my father and your father and to my God and to your God. Amen. Please be seated in this place. Glory be to God. Amen. This is this the mess this the reading itself is enough message. So even if we go and begin to ponder on those things, I'm sure God is going to speak something to our hearts today in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. The topic says, Thank God He died. That's the topic, thank God he died. I remember I shared a, a, a testimony, I mean, a story here before of two brothers. One was a criminal and one was a judge. And the younger one who was a criminal committed an offense and he was going to be executed. And the elder brother came to meet him in prison and took on himself his prison garments and decided to stay in the prison for execution and he freed his younger brother. On the day of execution, the brother who was the judge was executed and the criminal was set free. That's exactly what Jesus Christ did for us when he laid down his life. We we're meant to be executed. We we're meant to suffer. Rather, he took our sufferings, he took our pains, he took our reproach, he took our shame on himself so that we can have life and have that life more abundantly. Can you celebrate the altar of our joy today? The reason we are here today is because somebody paid the ultimate price. And we don't ever take that price for granted. Amen. Thank God he died. I want to say to us also that his death is not a fallacy. It's not a myth. It is reality. Some might say, oh, he went into a coma. Oh, something like when Jesus died, legitimately died. And I can assure you, he also rose again 
And even in the Bible, people died and they were, they, they were brought back to life. At least remember Jairus' daughter, who was dead, and she was brought back to life. Remember Lazarus, after four days, two was dead and was brought back to life. It means that when a man dies, he doesn't hang here. There's another life after this life. And if no one is even dead, it is possible to be raised back to life also. Praise the Lord. And I'm here to decree to your lives. Whatever thing seems to be dead in our lives, maybe there's a project, it is a business. The path that brought Jesus from the grave will bring it back alive. Amen. I didn't hear your amen to that church. I said, if anything is dead here that is good, the path that brought Christ from the grave will bring it back to life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. Would I just say, also tell us, first of all, that Crucifixion is not a very interesting thing. It is very gruesome. Praise the Lord. To glorify someone in the time of old, it was the, the worst form of death meant for criminals to showcase to the world that criminal, being a criminal is terrible. And that when you see someone being hung, you won't do what the person did to be hung. But Jesus Christ was on that cross. He was meant to be a criminal, someone who knew no sin. We must understand that he also spent some hours, six hours, on that cross. I learned, I read from the books that some people who are diehards, they can be on that three for days. We know what it means to be dying gradually for days. It is too much. But the Bible says he was there for only six hours. And I also remember that the Almighty God made the heavens and the earth. Its creation was done in six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. So if God created the heavens and the earth, everything he has created in six days. Jesus also spent six hours on that cross, creating, recreating our destinies. Amen. Recreating our lives. Recreating hope and future for us in his Father's presence. Thank you, Jesus. I love Jesus forever. Do you love him too like I do? Yes. Tell your neighbor, do you love Jesus like I do? Yes. So let me quickly go to Mark chapter 16. I want us to read, to follow me. The Bible says, on the Sabbath, that Sabbath, that Sunday, like a day like this, that says, Mary Magdalene, Mary Magdalene, some women, Mary the mother, and Salome, Johanna, read different people's comments. John gave an account, Luke gave his own account, Matthew, but they went that early morning. I said, the women went there. They were, they were, what were they going there with? Did you see it in your Bible? With what? Beautiful spices. They left, they prepared the spices from home. They prepared the spices from home and they were taking it to where? To where Jesus was buried. To go anoint his dead body with the spices. And as they were going, they were worrying. Who will roll away the stone for us? That was their worry. And they were still going with the spices. And the Lord made me to know that what does the spice re represent in your life today? Those spices are your praises. They are your worship. Because they are sweet smelling. They are your worship. They are your prayers. They are your offerings. They are your tithes. They are the things you come to present to the Lord. Amen. Remember that Mary, one day Jesus was sitting eating in a place and she broke a bottle of alabaster box of oil, and you remember? And she poured it on Jesus and she was wiping her tears, using her hair to wipe Jesus' feet. Remember the story? That sweet smelling, sweet smelling spice. That thing, she brought it again another time to anoint Jesus' body. And I want to tell you that Jesus expects, God expects that when we come into his presence, we come with with worship, with offerings, with, with praises. Because you cannot be praising God and be perplexed in life. It is not possible. You cannot be a worshiper and things will go worse with you. It is not possible. Amen. And you see, you cannot be thankful and your thank won't be full. It is impossible. God knows that when you give your offerings, things go well with you. It's, he knows that you can't be tight in, and things will be tight. You can't come every day and be every week and be a week. It is not possible. So God is saying, each time you bring those things to my presence, each time you bring them, you are bringing your spices. And I love the spices you bring. 
Because it's I love your spices of worship. Today we have worshipped a lot tremendously. We have praised him. We sang him. Because I love those spices. Keep bringing them to my house. Keep bringing them to my presence. That is what I want from you. You can't even give me it. Are you going to cook rice when you eat your... Are you going to give him rice to eat or, or whatever? I love the spices. If you have not been giving enough, give more. Tell anybody, give more of those spices. Bring more of those spices to his presence because he loves those spices. And the Bible says they were worried. Who will roll away the stone? Because the stone was a very large stone. Remember when Jesus was buried, the chief priests and the Pharisees told Pilate, this man, when he was alive, said that he was going to rise on the third day. His disciples are coming, they will come and steal his body. So seal up very well that home and let there be guard. So it was properly sealed up. So when we're worrying, who will run away the stone for us? Who will run away the stone for us? But at the time they got there, the stone was not there again. Are you here today, child of God? As you bring your spice to the house of the Lord, you're praising God, you're worshipping Him, you're praying, you're giving your attention. Yes, you're still worried. How do I pay the student loan? He says, daughter, cast those cares on me because I care for you. And you're worried, oh, I can't go through a foreclosure. I want my mortgage paid. You're still worrying. How do I roll away? This big stone of huge mortgage, this big stone of doctor's spot, this big stone of threatened divorce because it's do not worry child of God what do you what are you supposed to do it says cast your cares on on who on Jesus don't worry worry won't solve it I worry a lot too sometimes I don't know about it. do you worry like me I worry how things are worrying me but the Lord told me that the Lord I said does not sleep nor slumber if God does not sleep nor slumber why shouldn't I have a sleep then so daughter go sleep sleep Amen. Because he's not sleeping or slumbering. Because finding your mother, then you try and take some sleep. 